Altalab sent over their new AP6 Pro Outdoor for us to check out, and we're going to be doing a little bit of a comparison of it versus the EAP650 Outdoor, which TP-Link sent over a long time ago. Now, they're, these products are pretty much the same, but with the only major difference being that this is 2x2 two two MIMO on the 5 GHz band, and this is 4x4 four four MIMO on the 5 GHz band. And aside from that, I think those are the only real differences. And just to highlight some of the major specifications of this device, of course it is Wi-Fi 6 capable, it has an IP68 weather rating, it is omnidirectional, it has a 1 gigabit Ethernet port on board, it also has Bluetooth so you can set up and configure it through the Autolabs app, it is PoE Plus capable or you can use a 48 volt or 0.5 amp adapter, and it also is 2x2 two two MIMO on the 2.5 gigahertz band and 4x4 four four MIMO on the 5 gigahertz band and I think finally it can operate between a negative 40 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius temperature range which is a pretty healthy range to be operating in. Opening the box we reveal the access point itself with very minimal packaging materials. Removing the access point will give us access to the accessories like these screws, zip ties, the mounting bracket itself, and the quick start guide. I wanted to give you guys a close up of the included screws you will need for mounting the bracket and mounting the access point to the bracket. The mounting bracket itself has a variety of mounting options which is great to see. For instance, like the fact that the bracket fits on a US standard electrical round box. Also included are the pieces that you will need to keep the ethernet connection watertight. This waterproof gland is a bit like a Lego and is one of the most simplest to use that I have ever seen. Pass through your ethernet cable through the nut, place the inner plastic grip over the ethernet cable as well, reassemble the waterproof gland around the ethernet cable, connect the ethernet cable and then tighten everything down to leave yourself with a nice waterproof seal. Even if you have tiny fingers like me, you may not be able to release the ethernet cable from the port. I found that using something small and skinny like this screwdriver helps release the ethernet cable. Not too bad. The AP6 Pro Outdoor has a similar profile to the other AP6s. It is a bit longer and ever so slightly wider, however. It is also a little bit taller due to the immensity of the heatsink and mounting bracket on the rear. Speaking of the rear, the factory reset button is easily accessible and holding it down for about 10 seconds will initiate the reset sequence. Opening the access point is extremely simple. You only need to remove these nine screws and the top cover will literally fall off as you'll see. I'm somewhat concerned about the quality of the seal as it's not the tightest that I've ever seen, but we'll find out in due time if this does fail or not. Anyway, here's what the inner workings look like. Enjoy. As much as I would love to take this thing apart completely, it is my only unit, so unfortunately I'm not going to remove the glue that's holding down the connections to the antennae because, again, it's my only unit and we haven't benchmarked this yet and I don't want to like potentially ruin it. But the big piece of metal on the backside is acting as a giant heatsink, which we're going to need for today's testing because it's about 35 degrees Celsius outside which might be a comfortable temperature for a CPU, but as a human being, I'm gonna tell you now, 35C is hot, boy, and it's super humid outside. So let's get this thing put back together, and then let's go do some benchmarking. The elephant trunk brings us the light from the internal LED, which is important to know about for the reassembly process, as you can see here. Ah. 
I could not find any information on how much to torque down these screws. So I just tightened them down until my bits slipped out with a little bit of effort. There are different ways to mount the access point, like on a pole, but I don't have a pole laying around anywhere. So I guess I'm just gonna use this wooden plank instead and show you how I went about it. But you do whatever works best for you, of course. and mounted. Be cautious with these screws as they are easy to strip, especially if you're like me and don't really know how to use tools. As with all outdoor tests, we have the access point set up and I do a single stream range test at 20 foot intervals all the way out to 160 feet. This time, however, I have a bonus test at 200 feet. The results from the AP6 Pro outdoor bandwidth testing and I have the EAP650 from TP-Link up here to also serve as a comparison between the two devices. Not that they are the same, but these were all single stream tests and something else to keep in mind is that these are the averages of five tests. So for instance, here at 20 feet for the download, we ran the download speed five times, average results, and then came up with 960 megabits per second. Now, another thing to keep in mind too is that these tests here were done during the summer around 35 degrees Celsius or 95-ish degrees Fahrenheit. And the tests here were done in the winter, but I don't believe this affected the device overall. I think this is what you could expect in the winter as well. That's just not something we were able to test due to the climate at the moment. But nonetheless, the 2.5 gigahertz channel is only here because there are gonna be devices that are required to be on the 2.5 gigahertz band. And we don't really care too much about the bandwidth, but nonetheless, the data is here in case you are curious. And then I think anyone that cares about true raw through bandwidth, these are the primary channels you're gonna be looking at. And that's why the 40 megahertz band has been excluded from this test. And I think the strongest points for the AP6 Pro really start to show up around 120 feet, showing us just how much bandwidth you might be able to get when you start getting at these extreme ranges. And the fact that it can reach out to 200 feet and still give us nearly 300 megabits per second on download and nearly 200 megabits per second on the upload is very impressive. Now, the reason why the EAP650 doesn't have results here is because at the time, uh, there were briar bush in my way and I had to go out in the woods in order to collect those results and that was something I was unwilling to do. I wish I would have done it because I took the time, got out into the woods and did it for the AP6 Pro and ended up being pretty impressed at the range and also bandwidth that this thing was able to provide. So unfortunately we don't have that data here, but just based off looking at these numbers, I'm pretty confident the EAP650 can hit that distance and probably provide very similar or almost as much performance as our AP6 Pro. But nonetheless, these are the results and overall I'm say I'm pretty impressed. It's great to see that Alta Labs is finally releasing some additional hardware. I can't wait to see what else they have for us in the future. And of course, videos like this would not be possible without all of you watching this content. So I do very much appreciate each and every one of you for watching. And thank you Alta Labs for sending this over and allowing me to test this hardware out. So with all that being said, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Peace.